In this video, we'll be talking about preparing your color right up. Okay, so this is a continuation from the previous video. If you haven't watched it, then it might be useful for you to actually uh, watch that one first. But then if you're confident, you haven't watched it, but then you still think that um, this is the right place for you to start, then, you know, uh, this is really good as well. Okay, so uh, we're using the color for, for Mathematics November 2021. There might be several, but then we're using a very specific one. So the problem statement uh, in the color, what does it say? It's uh, the, the color question sheet actually gives you a task. Okay, so they give you a task. Uh, the statement, it explains the task, um, uh, but then it's often not direct. Okay, so they, they have a weird way of asking uh, some of these questions. It might be hard for you, uh, for you to run with whatever they'll be giving you. So what you do is um, uh, you'd uh, recreate the question in a more specific way that is easy to follow for you, okay? Just uh, including most of the, the guidelines uh, that would help you um, get a somewhat com comprehensive uh, color submission, okay? So the statement uh, that explains the, the task is not often uh, direct, okay? So to show this, here's an example. So it says you're required to take measurements of at least two rooms uh, with different dimensions. Draw up uh, a plan for each room using an appropriate scale. Find the area of each room, then calculate the number of tiles needed for, for each room, okay? And all those other objectives. So you can recreate the question in a more specific way, okay? That is easy to follow for you. So this is you now internalizing whatever task you're given. You want to internalize it and come up with uh, something of your own, okay? That something should reflect exactly what you are asked in the color, okay? A good reason to create your own problem as well is to demonstrate that you have understood and interpreted the question very well. Okay, so um, I, I have an example here to show you where we actually uh, rephrased the, the color submission, uh, the question. Okay, so here uh, the problem statement example would be measure any two rooms of your choice and create a detailed, easy to follow plan about renovating the rooms with the tiles, okay? So include a model of the floor with the tiles and show the calculation for the corresponding areas on the plan and on the actual floor, okay? So that's just about it. And then uh, when you're writing, you have to include a method. A method should be uh, serialized steps, okay? So step one, step two, step three, step four, in the exact order that you would actually carry out them, the, the method, okay? So uh, for us, our method was very simple. And the, in the first part, we're going to measure using a 10 meter uh, tip measure, okay? So uh, here, if I include 10 meter tip measure, I'm demonstrating the dimensions that I'll be working with, okay? So if I, it's a 10 meter tip measure, sometimes it'd be adequate for uh, measuring certain rooms, okay? So most rooms would be less than 10 meters. So 10 meter tip measure, it's really good, okay? The dimensions of my bedroom. So uh, I'll be measuring the dimensions of my bedroom and also the dimensions of our sitting room, okay? So uh, the second part is I'll be verifying the measured uh, dimensions with the city council schematics for our house. So this is, you might realize that this is not even asked but then it demonstrates that I've understood I'm actually uh, using a somewhat um, uh, scientific way of actually verifying whatever I'll be measuring. So if I would uh, uh, compare with the city council schematics for our house, then this is really good. Why? Because if I get, let's say, for uh, our bedroom, if I, uh, my, my bedroom, if I get, let's say, three meters on one side, then I see in the schematics, it also says three meters. This is really encouraging. It shows me that I'm actually in the in the right direction, okay? So I'm supposed to record the dimensions and calculate the area of the uh, two floors. So this is another part. So I, the fourth step is I'll get measurements of a block of tiles from a local construction company. Again, this is how you flesh it up. You're fleshing it up. You're, you know, you're just telling them that it's not like you're just creating uh, tile dimensions on your own you're actually consulting someone who is uh, in, the, in that business and then there's someone is um, helping you to come up with um, uh, the correct or the proper 
uh, tiling for, for the room, okay? So alternatively, you can actually measure and record the dimensions of the tiles in your home using a tape measure. So this is this would be good in, in, in the way that you would, uh, at the end you'd verify uh, how many tiles are actually in the room and then also how many tiles you have, you've included, okay? So to simplify it, you don't actually measure because on most sitting rooms, they, they actually have uh, the chimney area uh, which is not tiled so but then you are just supposed to assume that it's a, it's a square room uh, it's it's a bit assumption they don't want you to uh, get too fancy with it so that part you can discount and then you can just um, uh, go with the length and the width and as if you're you're tiling the whole room so the fifth uh, part is um, we calculate the number of blocks required for each room okay so the blocks they are not even uh, there is no mention of blocks in the in the color but then we use blocks sometimes why because when i was consulting someone then they told me that these tiles they actually sold in blocks okay so sometimes you can uh, mention some of these details there is no negative marking and it might actually work out uh, to your advantage why because you're demonstrating that this is something that you actually did and you did it so well it's comprehensive okay so uh the 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 sixth part is you calculate the budget for the requirements this again is not even required but then you are also demonstrating how to use simple ratio to actually arrive at certain budgets for the for the number of blocks or the number of tiles that you'll be having there it's still fine and then obviously you have to demonstrate the the flooring plan using a suitable scale which you mentioned okay so i use an area scale to get the the area of the of the floors so this is just our calculation guide okay so in the next part uh what we do is you have to fill in this this is important you might think it's not important but uh, sometimes students they actually forget to fill in their details here so you just uh, write your your name here uh for example i can write Habit, habit, Uber. Okay, so my school is Ifid High School. So I would write that. So I'd write Ifid High School. If you want, you can use uh, our capital letters as well, just to go with the theme here. So center number, I can't remember what was my center number, but my canton number was like 2035 or something. So I'm going with that. Okay, so make sure that you have um, written this part because this part is uh, very well, very, uh, you know, it ties you to the color. It shows that you are the one who actually uh, did this. Okay, so this is your submission. So in the next part, uh, the method now, you just explain the method in uh, it's very simple terms. What is it exactly that you're doing? In this task, I measured and recorded the dimensions of my bedroom and our sitting room okay so you're mentioning what two rooms you actually used to to accomplish this color this this color and um uh you know using this particular tip measure you're demonstrating the tools that you are uh, using okay i then called the local construction company to request for a catalog of their flooring tiles you're fleshing it up okay so in the in my floor plan i use um, 50 centimeters by by 12.5 centimeters, which is good. You're mentioning uh, the dimensions for the tile uh, blocks. Okay, so each block is um, eight tiles. So this is the dimension for the for the tile block, and each block is eight tiles. So the calculation of the flooring plan for the are uh, included in this paper. So you're just telling them. And um, in the next part, we actually see for for the, the flooring plan for the first room. Okay, so this is how you'd go about it. You'd um, uh, include the drawing details. So the drawing details was you were using a scale factor of one centimeter to represent 0 0.1 meter. Okay, so you actually have to reason uh, what dimensions do you have. So for example, here we have uh, this width 30, uh, the three three meters. That means if we use uh, the scale, that that means would have would need for the width would actually need um, 30 centimeters, which is good. It's achievable. You can do that with the with the, with the ruler. Okay, with a simple ruler and uh, also five five uh, meters it's 50 centimeters you can do that with a simple ruler again just go to, to the up to 30 and then you just go uh 20 uh, centimeters more and then you're in okay so here you want to uh, demonstrate how you find the width of the plant so you use your scale so your scale is 1 point, uh, 0 0.1 meter to represent one centimeter so three meters would be would be more obviously we're using a simple ratio here so if it's small we say in a bigger number at the top so three meters divided by 0 0.1 meters times this one so here you can multiply by 10 
and then you get 30 meters over one meter, then 30 uh, and uh, meter, meter cancel. And then you're left with 30, so it's just 30 centimeters here, which is good, okay? So you do the same thing for your length. You have to uh, demonstrate the same thing for your, for your length. And when you're done, you get uh, this 50 uh, centimeters, okay? So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to continue in the next video where I'm going to show you uh, the, the actual plan from, from these details here, okay?